Hello trainers, my name is Rick, and I'll be your guide to finding every version exclusive in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Over the last week, I've scoured the wild area, checked every route, and refreshed Serebii about a thousand times, looking for every Pokemon in Galar. Now that I've caught them all, I can share my findings with each of you. Get ready to not only learn the location of rare exclusive Pokemon, but also how to change the weather, breed Pokemon quickly, make catching easier, and how to manipulate max raid dens. If this video ended up helping you, tap that like button, subscribe, and share the video around to help another lost soul. I'll be making more guides just like this one very soon. Let's begin the hunt. Please be aware that majority of the shield exclusives have the same location as their sword counterparts. To keep it clear, I've separated the videos into two sections. I'll be starting with sword and then I'll cover the information again for shield. Timestamps will be listed below. Before we go throwing Pokeballs all over the place, let's go over a few things you'll need to know. Obviously, this time around, there are a few more ways to catch Pokemon. Random encounters, which are grass-based only. Random overworld encounters, where you can see the Pokemon. Strong overworld encounters, these Pokemon always spawn in the same location and are mostly weather dependent. Pokemon camp, fishing, breeding, trading, and finally, max raid battles. Most of you already know about majority of these methods, but I gotta cover it for those that don't. Weather plays a huge role in what Pokemon spawn in certain areas. Not all Pokemon spawn like this, but most do, so pay attention to the different weather symbols on your map while in the wild area and on other routes. To see the weather, all you have to do is go to your map and press the plus button. Just in case, for reference, listed on the screen is what every weather symbol means. To make things easier, we'll be utilizing an exploit that allows you to change the weather at will. I'll be using the first Pokemon as an example. Those that don't know about it, stick around a bit longer before skipping around the video to find your Pokemon. Any of you trainers that have made it to Surchester can make your catching process a lot easier by stopping into the hotel. Specifically, the building on the left when first coming into town. At the top floor, you can find the Game Freak devs on vacation. In the far room, you'll find the director, who will give you the catching charm. Make note that he will also give you the shiny charm upon completing the decks, so you'll want to come back for that later. For those that have defeated the champion, you can make your way next door to the director's room to pick up the oval charm from Morimoto. The oval charm increases the chances of an egg spawning at the nursery, which will come in handy later on. With those two things, you should be ready to catch them all. Make sure to stick around till the end to find out how to easily obtain all of the version exclusive Gigantamax Pokemon. CDOT and its evolutionary line are the first on the dex list. The best area to find CDOT is West Lake Axwell, where you have a 60% chance to find this acorn Pokemon wandering around in the overworld during overcast weather. You might get lucky the first time passing through Lake Axwell, but for those that aren't, I have a trick that will help you change the weather at will. This is going to be used many, many times throughout your quests to fill your decks, so pay attention here. To change the weather, all you need to do is go to the location where you want to search for the Pokemon, open up your map, press the plus button to check what the current weather status is, then press the home button, go to system settings, down to system, then to date and time, turn off synchronize via internet if on, and then change the date. Thanks to Austin John Plays, we all know of the dates to change the entire weather table all at once. To get overcast, just punch in March 1st, 2020. Make sure to press OK, click the home button again, go back into the game and double tap the plus button to see the weather change. Given that CDOT has a 60% chance to be found and it's an overworld Pokemon, you shouldn't have too much trouble finding it. Next would be Nuzleaf. For most Pokemon, it's a lot easier to evolve them or breed them down rather than going out and catching them. However, I will list the areas with the highest catch rates on screen for those that want to go out and find them. As for Nuzleaf, my recommendation would be to simply evolve your CDOT at level 14. You can do this the old fashioned way via battling, or you can do it the easy way by giving it EXP candies which are a reward for completing max raid battles. Anyone willing to exchange friend codes, I implore you to leave them down in the comments below. I've also left a link to my Discord group where you can come and chat about the games and more. Moving on, we have the final evolution, Shiftry, who can be obtained via using a Leaf Stone on Nuzleaf. All elemental stones can easily be found by visiting the Digging Duo who is located in the Bridgefield region of the Wild Area. 
The one on the left gives quality over quantity, and the one on the right gives quantity over quality. Personally, I've had more luck getting the elemental stones from the guy on the right. It'll be 500 watts a pop from both. So if you need a watt farming guide, make sure to stick around till the end. For now, just go around from den to den until you have enough to get the required stones. Hitmonlee is the next version exclusive Pokemon. Kind of. You see, what's interesting is you can only find Hitmonlee in the wild and sword, but you can find it in max raid battles and shield. The same goes for Hitmonchan, which can be found in the wild in Pokemon Shield, but in sword it can only be found in max raid battles. Hitmonlee's spawn location is the Dusty Bowl in Giant Mirror's section of the map during Overcast. While it may only have a 5% chance of spawning, given that he's an overworld Pokemon, him only appears more abundantly due to higher spawn rates. In simple terms, you won't be looking for this pocket monster very long. Basculin is another one that's sort of an exclusive. Both games feature Basculin, but of course, Sword's version has a red stripe and Shield's has a blue. The best place to find Basculin is this pond here in the Motostoke Riverbank area. I recommend changing the weather to intense sun or normal to greatly increase your chances of spotting them. Swirlix, the cotton candy Pokemon, is next. This one can be found pretty early in the game on Route 5 with a 30% chance of spawning in the overworld. Alternatively, if you'd rather stick to hunting in the wild area, you can head over to Giant's Mirror for an extra 10% chance to see Swirlix during foggy weather. Though I don't see the point in wasting your time resetting for the fog. To evolve this Pokemon, you'll need a trading buddy or two Nintendo Switches and two copies of the game. And your Swirlix will need to be holding an item known as a Whipped Dream, which can either be obtained by going to the Battle Cafe in Hammerlock or by purchasing it from the Pokemon Center for 10 BP. I prefer going to the BP shop in Hammerlock as you can only challenge the Barista to a battle once a day and the Whipped Dream isn't guaranteed. After you've gotten your Whipped Dream, have Swirlix hold on to it and then trade it. Once on the other side, Swirlix will evolve into Slurpuff. Fret not, if you can't find a warm body to trade with and you don't have another copy of the game, you can either join my Discord group and find someone to trade with, or you can find Slurpuff in max raid battles exclusively in Sword. In the Bridgefield section, Slurpuff can be found in Rare Den 87, which I'll show you on screen. Slurpuff can also be found in Common Den number 33 in the Hammerlock section, and finally in Rare Den 74 in the Lake of Outrage. If you're truly interested in getting nearly any max raid Pokemon, keep watching till the end. Farfetch'd finally got the treatment he deserves. I'm sure a lot of you are in a hurry to get him and I can almost guarantee some of you are wondering how the heck he evolves. Well, true to the series, Game Freak had to include a few odd ways of evolving Pokemon. First, let's find out where to catch this wild duck. Believe it or not, you can get Farfetch'd pretty early on in the game. All you have to do is make it to Route 5, where you'll have a 5% chance to snag him in the overworld during all weather conditions. Once you've successfully caught yourself a Farfetch'd, give it a leak to hold on to. Now it's time to attempt the evolution process. In order for Farfetch'd to evolve, it needs to get 3 critical hits in one battle. The leak we gave it should help in that process, but it's not required. If you want to, you can increase the chances of a critical hit even further by giving Farfetch'd a dire hit once in battle. Find a Pokemon that's either resistant to Farfetch'd attacks, or find something higher level than your Pokemon. It might take you a couple tries to get this one down, but I swear it works. Scraggy, the shedding Pokemon, can be found in the Dusty Bowl during Overcast. You have a 60% chance to see this one in the wild area at the aforementioned Dusty Bowl and Giant's Mirror, so it should be relatively easy to locate Scraggy. After that, all you have to do is level him to level 39 and you have yourself a Scrafty finishing up this evolutionary line. Gothita, Gotharita, and Gothitelle can all be found in the overworld. Both Gothita and Gotharita have a 50% chance of spawning in the Giant's Cap area during foggy weather. Gothitelle, on the other hand, pops up at the Lake of Outrage and has a lousy 13% chance to spawn. 
Even though I've seen them in the overworld, I would stick to evolving your Gothita into a Gotharita at level 32, and then tough it out the next 9 levels for it to evolve into a Gothitel at 41. Now for Rufflet, which I recommend heading to Route 8 for. Here, Rufflet has a 10% chance to spawn in the overworld during all weather conditions. You could go for the 25% chance in Bridgefield, but it's a grass encounter and who am I to save you a little bit of time, right? Its evolution, Braviary, can be easily found in the Dusty Bowl flying around rain or shine. Time for some singles. Following Rufflet and its evolution, Braviary, is Mawile. This steel type has a 35% likelihood to appear as an overworld encounter in the Dusty Bowl and Giant's Mirror during a snowstorm. Pretty simple. One that isn't so quick to spawn is Male Indeedy, with only a 5% chance to spawn as a grass encounter in Glimwood Tangle. The good thing about this is that Indeedy is found in an area with small patches of grass that don't spawn overworld Pokemon, making everyone's lives a lot easier. I don't know how many times I've wanted to chuck my controller at the TV screen because some rogue rando Pokemon decided to drunkenly stumble into my hunt. Or even better, the ones that chase you down like you got a pocket full of Pokeblocks or something. If you happen to fail at finding it in Glimwood, you can always try for the 14% spawn rate over at the Lake of Outrage. But like I was saying, getting chased down by Pokemon every 5 seconds isn't fun at all, hence my initial recommendation. Passimian is another one that can be found in Glimwood Tangle, so if you're there, you might as well pick him up too. Just like Indeedee, Passimian is a grass encounter, but has a 9% chance of being found. If you went to the Lake of Outrage in search of that Indeedee I mentioned earlier, you might want to try for Turtonator as well. Another grass encounter, Turtonator has a 2% chance to appear during intense sun. A useful tip is to place a Pokemon that has the ability Flash Fire at the beginning of your team, greatly increasing your odds to come across fire types. Funny enough, Turtonator was the very last Pokemon I caught when filling my decks. Took a minute, but I found him. Following a hard one is an easy one, Solrock. The Meteorite Pokemon emerges from the ground in Giant's Cap area too. You'll find two of them here no matter what. For those of you wondering, Lunatone can also be found here in Shield, though I'll still cover it once we get to that section for visual reference. The new Galarian forms for Darumaka and Darmanitan are up next. Darumaka is a tricky one to find with only a 5% chance to be encountered in the grass on Route 8 and Route 10 respectively. Unlike its Unova form, Darumaka does not need to be leveled up to 38, instead it needs an Ice Stone in order to evolve, making the process a lot faster for dex filling purposes. Stone Jorner is yet another difficult Pokemon to find, as it can only be encountered in the grass and its highest spawn chance is 5% during a sandstorm in the Lake of Outrage section of the map. While I was hunting for mine, I accidentally came across one in Intense Sun, which is an even lower 2%. I guess I got lucky on that one. Finally, some Dragon types, Dieno and its evolutionary line. I would skip Dieno altogether and just go for Zwilus. Reason being, Dieno only appears in the grass with a 2% chance of appearing, while Zwilus has a 2% chance to spawn in the overworld during a sandstorm in the Lake of Outrage. Way more reasonable to work with. After you catch a Zwilus, all you have to do is head over to the nursery, breed it with the ditto, grab the egg, hatch it, and then you'll have yourself a Dieno. To finish it up, just level up your Zwilus to level 64 to get a Hydreigon. More Dragon Types some of you that got the double pack might already have Jangmo O and its evolutions, but for those that don't, this one goes out to you. While you won't be cool with the Jangmo O right at the beginning of your adventure, you can skip all the hunting nonsense and just go straight for the strong spawn of Kamo O, -O which is of course the final evolution of Jangmo O. Kamo O O's strong spawn can be found in the Dusty Bowl as seen on screen. Once you got yours, take it back to the nursery to do some breeding. Hatch the egg to get an easy Jangmo O, and then level it to 35 using EXP candies or battling, and you'll have your dex entry for Hakamo O. The last non Gigantamax Pokemon for Sword is Zacian. Do I need to explain this one? Just finish up the story and you'll be good to go. Now to get into the Shield exclusives. Going all the way back to the top of the decks, we begin with Lotad, Lombre, and Ludicolo. 
To save time, go to Westlake Axwell where you have a 60% chance to catch a glimpse of Lotad roaming around a patch of grass near the lake during overcast. Use the weather changing exploit talked about earlier in the video to force the weather to change. Then take your Lotad and level it to 14. It will then evolve into Lombre, which can take a water stone and evolve into Ludicolo to top off the dex entry for this Evo line. Again, all elemental stones can be found behind the pillars in the Lake of Outrage or by the digging duo in Bridgefield. I mentioned Hitmonchan in the sword section of this video, but he's technically a shield exclusive. In the wild, that is. Oddly enough, both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee are exclusive to their respective games in the wild. However, you can find both in max raid battles. Just like Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan spawns in the Dusty Bull and Giant's Mirror area with a 5% chance to appear in the overworld during overcast. Is it just me, or do these exclusive Pokemon really love that overcast weather? Eh, whatever. Basculin is another Pokemon I previously mentioned. While Basculin in Sword has a red stripe, the one in Shield has a blue one. Both can be predominantly found in this pond near the Motostoke riverbank. Change the weather to intense sun or normal for the best chance to spot them in the surf. Shield's exclusive trading evo, Spritzy, is next. Just like Swirlix, Spritzy needs to be traded while holding an item to evolve. In this case, we'll need a sachet which to my knowledge can only be purchased in the Pokemon Center in Hammerlock for 10 BP, just like the Whip Dream for Swirlix. Take out enough trainers in the Battle Tower until you have the allotted amount of battle points, go back to Hammerlock, grab the Sachet, give it to Spritzy, trade it, and then it will evolve once on the other side. In the case you don't have anyone to trade with, you can also find Spritzy's evolution, Aromatisse, in max raid battles. Here's the location for everyone interested. For more information on Raid Dens, stick around. Back to the Dusty Bowl and Giant's Mirror, but in Shield this time. We have Krogunk, who is yet another Pokemon that has a high likelihood of appearing during Overcast in this area. These version exclusives really enjoy their gloomy weather, don't they? After you've caught your Krogunk, level it to 37 to evolve it into Toxicroak. For anyone else interested, you can always find Toxicroak frogging around the stony wilderness during Overcast as well, so look there if you don't feel like wasting candies. Galarian Corsola and its brand new evolution, Cursula, are some rather interesting variants that are pretty hard to come by. Over in Giant's Mirror, once again during Overcast, there's a 5% chance to see Galarian Corsola in the overworld, but keep a close eye out as they are efficient at staying hidden in the grass due to their brand new design. To evolve Corsola into Cursula, all you have to do is bring its level up to 38. Solosis can be found in the Giant's Cap area during foggy weather. Finally, a change of pace. Throughout this section of the map, you'll have anywhere from a 40-50% to 50 chance for a Solosis to make an appearance. Solosis can then be evolved into Duosion at level 32, and then into Reuniclus at level 41. Both of these evos can be found in the wild, but they aren't worth searching for once you have Solosis. Route 8 is your best bet to catch a baby Volibee. It's the only location this Pokemon has a 10% chance to spawn in the overworld. Everywhere else is 5% or 25% in the grass over in Bridgefield. Volibee evolves into Mandibuzz at level 54, or similar to Braviary, you can find Mandibuzz flying around the Dusty Bowl during almost every weather condition. Sableye is a bit different than its sword counterpart, Mawile. It may appear in the same locations, that is the Dusty Bowl and Giant's Mirror, but it has a 30% chance to be found in foggy weather conditions rather than a snowstorm. See, I told you they weren't the same all the time. The famous My Little Ponyta and Rapidash can be found exclusively in Glimwood Tangle with a 10% chance to run into one in the grass. Luckily, these patches of grass are small and no overworld Pokemon spawn in them. Once captured, Ponyta evolves into Rapidash at level 40. Since you're already in Glimwood Tangle, you might as well try to find a female Indeedee. 
Its spawn chance is low at only 5% in the grass, but its other location at the Lake of Outrage isn't very much fun to hunt for grass encounters due to the high volume of overworld Pokemon. A Raquinid can go to hell for all I care. Don't storm off too quickly after catching that NDD or Ponyta. We still have one last find in Glimwood, Orangaroo. Identical to Passimian, Orangaroo has a 9% chance to spawn in the grass during all weather conditions. Drompa is Shield's version of Turtonator, though unlike Turtonator who has a 2% chance to spawn in the grass during intense sun, Drompa has the same odds during a thunderstorm. Manipulate the weather and keep those fingers crossed cause you could be in for quite the hunt with this one. Coming off a rare into a guaranteed Pokemon is always nice. Lunatone can be found 100% of the time in Giant's Cap. From the entrance of Hammerlock, they can be found right behind this rock here. Same exact spot as Soul Rock and Sword. Back to the hunt for rares with IceQ. You can search for IceQ in a couple of locations. One being the Lake of Outrage with a 5% chance to pop up during a snowstorm. If you don't want to do the whole weather reset thing over again, you can take your chances on Route 10 where IceQ has a 2% chance to be encountered in the grass. Against my better judgment, I went ahead and went to the Lake of Outrage to hunt this one, and I got lucky. Let me know where you found yours. Like with Jangmo and its Evos for Sword, some of you that purchased the double pack may have gotten a special Dynamax crystal containing Larvitar for Pokemon Shield. Those of you that didn't will unfortunately have to wait until later in the game. Though getting one will be super easy once you do. When you've finished up the gyms, go over to the Dusty Bowl during a sandstorm and find Larvitar's final evolution, Tyranitar. You can then go over to the nursery, breed Tyranitar with a ditto, hatch the egg, and you'll have yourself a quick Larvitar, which can then be leveled to 30 to evolve it into a Pupitar. Unlike Dino, you won't be able to bypass the hunt for a Gumi. Sligu has the same 2% chance to appear in the grass in the Lake of Outrage, so you're better off starting from the bottom and evolving the Gumi. To find one, all you need to do is change the weather to raining and then start encountering as many Pokemon as you can while making sure to dodge the overworld Pokemon. Level the Gumi up to 40 to get a Sligu and then while in the rain, level it up 10 more times to 50 so it will evolve into a beautiful Gudra. Last is Zamazenta. Play the story. Time to cover the Gigantamax Pokemon that are exclusive to both games. Don't try to catch any of these Pokemon unless you've at least beaten the 8th gym. Just like with catching the previous Pokemon, we need to go over the basics of dens and the exploits that will make your life a thousand times easier when hunting. For starters, a den is split into two different spawn groups. One pulls from a common group of Pokemon. This is represented as a pink beam of light. The other pulls from a rare group of Pokemon, which produces a purple or magenta color and appears more potent than the former common spawns. The Pokemon that we'll be looking for today will all be coming from the rare spawn tables. Normally to reset the dens, you would need to ride around to each one and defeat the raid bosses one by one. Alternatively, you could go to one of the league staff members situated at various locations throughout the wild area and buy what is known as wishing pieces. These items can be used to activate any den you desire, though they come at the sore price of 3000 watts apiece, making them a sought after commodity. It doesn't stop there though. To get the most out of your wishing pieces, you'll want to take advantage of two exploits. One allows you to manipulate a den spawn table. You'll need to use this in order to get a guaranteed purple beam of light. Begin the process by picking the den you'd like to hunt. Open up your menu, go to options, change your text speed to slow, and turn off auto saves. Exit the options menu and then save your game in front of the den. You might be asking yourself, why in the world would I ever want to change my text speed to slow in a Pokemon game? It's because timing is key when it comes to this next part. Your first time you'll most likely need the text speed on either slow or normal. It helps a lot. After you've manually saved your game, place the wishing piece in the den and just before it saves your game, press the home button. If you saw a purple beam of light right before pressing the home button, you're good. If not, restart your game and try again. Thanks to Austin John Plays, we know that you have a 10% chance to get a purple beam of light, so just keep trying until you get one. Once you've got yourself a rare spawn, you'll need to start the next exploit. This was brought to my attention via Austin, but he found out from a YouTuber by the name of Kershaka. Thanks guys, I was about to give up on getting these Gigantamax variants for this video before this was found. With your rare spawn in front of you, disconnect from YCOM and save your game just in case something happens. Then you're free to check the den. 
If it's not the Pokemon you're looking for, this is where the exploit comes in. Click on Invite Other Players. Once it starts searching, press the Home button. Go to System Settings, all the way down to System, then Date and Time. Turn off the synchronized clock via internet, and then move the date forward by one day as shown on screen. Make sure to press OK, tap the Home button once more, go back into the game, and finally quit the raid. Check the den again, and if you're rewarded with 2000 watts, you'll know you've done it right. The super cool thing here is that this method can be used to farm G-Max Pokemon and watts at the same time. All you have to do from this point is continue to repeat the same process until you get the Pokemon you've got your eyes on. With the Pokemon you want in front of you, make sure to save your game, go ahead and battle it, catch it, and then finish it up by changing your date back to its original settings. The first two exclusives are Flapple for Sword and Appleton for Shield. Both Pokemon can be evolved from an Applin by means of either a Tart Apple for Flapple, which can only be found in Sword, or a Sweet Apple for Appleton, which can only be found in Shield. In both games, you can get this item by talking to this NPC in Hammerlock and gifting him your Applin. The NPC will try to give the Applin to his crush, who will refuse it since you're the one who caught it. The NPC will then give you the Applin back with one of the two items. From there, just give Applin the item to evolve it into either variant. As for the G-Max evolutions, both can be found in the same location in either version. Rare Den number 79 in the far west corner of Dapple Grove. Utilizing that den exploit I just talked about could get you one fairly quickly. I'm not gonna lie though, it took me more than an hour to get each of them. G-Max Machamp for Sword and G-Max Gengar for Shield are both located very close to the front entrance of Hammerlock in the Stony Wilderness at Rare Den 81. It's the one further down the hill if you get the two dens mixed up. Last is G-Max Colossal and G-Max Lapras. These two spawn at Rare Den 83 in Giant Sea. G-Max Lapras took me over two hours to catch even with the exploit, just for reference. And that's a wrap. Probably one of the most in-depth guides I've done since Fantastic Armor and where to find it. Huge shout out goes to Joe Merrick over at Cerebi, Austin John Plays, and Kershaka for all of your helpful tips and information. If it wasn't for your hard work, this video would have never seen the light of day. As for all of you, let me know if you found this guide useful down in the comments below. While you're at it, subscribe and hit that like button to show your support. You might just want to tap the notification bell too. I'm in the process of making more Pokemon guides. Plus, streams will be coming back to YouTube. Shiny hunting and more is coming soon, so stay tuned. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your busy lives to watch my content. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Peace out.